Hello and welcome to the 8th Pi Game tutorial video with Python 3. Where we left off, uh, we generate our blocks, we uh, crash if we run into the blocks or the side of the screen. And now what we want to do is we want to have some sort of scoring system. And then we can take this scoring system not only to track our progress, but also measure our progress uh, in the game. And then increase difficulty based on the progress. So, uh, with that, let's go ahead and get started. So the first thing we're going to want to do is... Um, we want to have some sort of way of doing a, a scoring system, okay? So probably the best thing to do is like you just put the score in like the top left or something like that, or the top right. So what we're going to go ahead and do is we're going to go, we're going to put it in the top left for now. And uh, what we're going to need first of all is some sort of function that's going to do that for us. So I'm going to call mine define things underscore dodged. And this function is going to have one parameter, and that's going to be count. So, like, how many things have we dodged? And what we're going to do is basically every time a screen is reset or a, a block is reset, uh, we're going to say, "Well, we dodged it." So we'll add one to the count. But as far as displaying um, this count, uh, we just need to say font and define the font, and we're going to use pygame dot font dot uh, sys font. Um, so that's just the default system font, basically. Uh, none and then we'll do 25 and then we're going to say text equals font dot render and we're going to render to screen dot oops dodged uh and then colon and then we'll add a space here plus string of count so the string version of you know the count whatever it is and then we'll use uh, anti-aliasing, and then we're going to use the color black uh, for things dodged. So that's going to put it on our screen. Now we actually have to um, calculate that. So before our loop starts, uh, we're going to need to we start at zero. So we'll say we'll just say dodged equals zero. So we have a starting number here, and then. Every time we reset, so we ask this question like if thing um, is greater than the display height. So we're asking there if um, if that's happened, then we then we run this right. The next question or the next the thing that we'll do here is we'll say dot oops, yeah dodged plus equals one, and then um that's all we really need to do there and then also before or i guess i guess right after we draw a car since this is where we're kind of drawing everything is like right around here um we'll do that as well so we'll say um what was it things underscore dodged and then the count was just this dodged variable things underscore dodged i believe is what we used yeah okay so that should display to our screen um our score hopefully and it did not Close this, close this. Uh, Pi game, it's pretty empty. Things dodged, dodged. Um, hmm. Hmm. Oh, what we, what we forgot to do is we didn't blit it to the screen. So every time um, that we want to, we can make something and then we kind of put it in, this, in the background and then we'll display it. So we have to blit. So to do that, we're going to do game uh, display. And then we run dot blit. What do we want to blit? Well, we want to blit text. And then where do we want to blit it? And that's going to be uh, zero, zero. So we'll save. Let's run that again. There we go. So now we have dodged up here. And as soon, uh oh, watch out. OK, so now it's going up every time we actually dodge one of these things. So cool. Now we'll close out of this. OK. And so now we've got this score that goes up every time that we dodge something. But the game is still pretty boring. Yeah, we're tracking progress, but we're not actually doing anything with the progress. So one of the things that we can do is we can just make this progressively more and more difficult. So we can come over uh, here, and every time we do dodge plus equals one, we also know that, well, we've dodged one. So we don't have to actually like reference that variable at all. We just know that, like, oh, it's been reset. So. The other thing that we can do is we could say a uh, thing. We could, well, first of all, we could do a couple of things. One, we could speed up the things. So our things, our things have a speed of seven right now. Let's make it three to start, um, or 
before. Uh, thing speed, what we can do is we can say thing underscore speed plus equals one. So every time we have one to our score, we're also going to do plus one to the speed of the objects. So we'll save and run that. So it starts off relatively slow, kind of starts speeding up, getting faster, even faster. And just each time we dodge one, they get a little quicker on us pretty soon. This is going to be impossible to dodge if you get one that you. <laughs> Anyway, so you can do that and pretty much make your game nearly impossible. Uh, um, the other thing that we can do as well is thing speed plus equals one. Um, for now, uh, I'm just going to comment this out. Um, we can we can increase that in a variety of ways. The other thing we can do is we can change width and height of the things that we're trying to avoid. So, for example, we could do thing. The hardest one would be width. But if you change the height, it just means that you have to wait that much longer to get somewhere. Generally, the safest place to be would be like right in the middle as we get things bigger. But you'll see what I mean in a second. So we can say thing width, thing underscore width, uh, plus equals. And then we'll grow it compared to our score or our dodged amount. So we can say plus equals dodged times like 1.2 or something like that just to slowly make it a little bigger, a little bigger, a little bigger. So we'll save and run that. <clears throat> and so you can see the first one obviously is 100, um, 100 pixels. That one got a little bit wider, or at least it should have. I can't tell visually if they're getting wider or not. We did do plus <laughs> It's off the screen, man. I want to see one on the screen. Yeah, it looks like they're definitely getting slightly wider. That was no longer a box. This would go a lot faster if we uh, sped up the pace as well but yeah you can see they're getting definitely wider and wider and wider still easy to avoid for the most part and that's why I kind of like to pick up the pace a little bit um, just to add slightly uh, more challenge to it so for example um, we'll just exit out okay and we'll also do thing speed plus equals one and uh, get started here it's a nice slow pace to begin and then things start going, getting out of hand here pretty soon, probably. Not too bad at start, huh? It's pretty easy. No problemo. <laughs> oh my goodness. Uh, a little harder, a little harder. Still maintaining my middle position. Oh, oh my god, they're moving too fast. Oh, goodness. Challenge anybody to beat my score. Oh, man, that was impossible. So <laughs> eventually the game gets pretty much impossible. But just wanted to give you guys a, a couple ideas about how you can kind of increase the difficulty. You don't have to increase it even this fast. You could you can change, thing speed doesn't have to go up by one either. You could go slower than that. Um, so the next thing I wanna do is just cover a couple, like for example, as you saw, if the blocks get big enough or you crash into the side, our text isn't really the best color for text or maybe it's our blocks that aren't the best color for our blocks. So now I just want to cover really quickly. Um, we can change a few things. First of all, you always want to make sure, um, like for example, your score is drawn last. That way nothing overlaps the score. So you always want to make the score drawn last because when someone crashes or something, if something's overlapping their score, they're going to be ra relatively angry because they can't see their score. So uh, you want to do that. And uh, luckily we're already doing that. But then you could change the color of the score too. So our score is black. So if something that's black covers the score, we're not gonna we're not gonna see it anyways. Like they're gonna mesh. So we want to change the color now. At least for me, you can go on to like various uh, websites, and you can find like you can look up RGB color codes. So you can get like a color wheel and select a specific color. Um, for now, I'm just gonna uh, give you guys some. But yeah, you can look them up, or you can even go to like Paint. And usually you can like uh, pick a color and paint like this, and then you can just take the red, green, and blue values of, of that as well. So you can do that. Um, so I'm gonna say uh, block underscore color equals, and the color I was gonna use was 53, 115, 255. And then block color, we'll copy that, and then we're gonna come down to where we draw our things. Um, and color will just 
be this right here. So we'll say block color. Or actually, well, we're passing through color. So actually, we need to do that when we call things here. So we call it black. We'll say block color. So we can save and run that. And now we have like this blue, okay? And now you crashed, it could overlap the blue, it wouldn't be a big deal. Our score is drawn last, so we'll always see score um, and all that. So you can obviously change the colors and uh, do that kind of stuff. So that's really the basics that I wanted to cover with Pygame. Obviously there's a whole lot of stuff that you can do with Pygame. You can make um, all kinds of games. You can check out pygame.org and just look at all of the games people make. Hopefully, now that you have a lot of the basics of Pi Game down, you could look at various games and kind of see how they do it. Um, someone did ask me to give a slight challenge at the end of some of my uh, series here. And so I think the challenge I'm going to uh, give you guys is adding multiple blocks without hard coding it. So what I mean by that is um, you have maybe a counter here that says uh, thing count and you obviously start at one but one of the other ways that we could increase difficulty is by increasing the number of blocks not increasing their size necessarily but just adding more to, to have to dodge and so and so you could do that instead of in, in, and increase size and speed or, or do some sort of combination of those things so my challenge would be adding more uh, more things uh, to avo avoid without hard coding them in as in not doing something like things and then making a function for like uh, like this, like things two and things three, like not building a function for that, but just adding them in like a for loop or something like for, um, for thing in range of thing count and then creating them that way. So good luck. Anyway, um, I might add on to this, probably not. Uh, I just wanted to get one out there for uh, Python 3. So anyway, if you guys have any questions or comments or have ideas on how to improve uh, this game. Pretty sure we can also improve this function here. I believe um, this statement here, there is probably, I think there's a flaw in this statement as well. I'll let someone, it's just a redundancy really in this statement that we don't really need to ask. But uh, anyway, um, I'll leave that to homework as well if you guys want. But anyways, uh, if you guys have any questions or comments uh, or improvements, feel free to leave them below. As always, thanks for watching. Thanks for all the support and subscriptions. And until next time.